I grew up in Hong Kong, and I received my first degree at the University of Hong Kong, and then I went to London, the London School of Economics, uh, to do my master's. And then I joined uh, the Wharton School to do my PhD, and then uh, started my career at Stanford University in 1983. And throughout my career, uh, early on, I wanted to be an ac academic who worked closely with industry, solving real problems, relevant uh, problems. And in my early days, when I was consulting and working closely with companies like Hewlett Packard and General Motors and Apple Computer, I found that when I tried to help them to solve an operations problem, oftentimes the root of the problem is not just within one part of the company. Instead, uh, sometimes it's with the suppliers, sometimes with downstream, sometimes with product design, sometimes with logistics, sometimes with the finance or the channel. So that triggered me into the study of the whole complete value net. All the key partners in a value net must be managed and coordinated well in order to make a difference. In 1997, I published uh, the paper on the bullwhip effect, uh, which um, has received uh, a lot of attention by industry and academics. Uh, the bullwhip effect is about information distortion in a supply chain where uh, demand information oftentimes is exaggerated one way or the other as it travels up the value chain. That paper identified the causes of such a phenomenon so that instead of just observing the phenomenon, we are able to see why it happened. And as a result, uh, the impact of that paper has been that industry has started to figure out ways to address the causes of the BWIP effect. Um, and I think over the last 10 years, we have seen increasing collaboration among business partners, the sharing of information, the trying to understand how to change incentives among the trading partners so as to avoid the behavior of deliberate exaggerations or distortion of information. With the progress of advanced technologies, I see that the value chain uh, has evolved in the three stages. The first stage is that the value chain has become increasingly efficient and reliable. And that's because of technologies and because of better tools and better um, processes in place. And then, as the process becomes more efficient, we are also beginning to see the latent needs of the customers uh, being served. So companies are able to do mass customizations, mass personalization, so that different needs and different special requirements of the customers are fulfilled. But I think the final stage of that evolution would be new business models are emerging. Making use of the advances of technologies, we are creating new business models so that companies are not just providing products. Many of them are providing services. Many of them are providing offerings that make it easy for the customers to make use of their products. I think a good, good example of what I describe of the evolution um, happens in China, which is of course a hot topic these days. People are all excited and nervous about uh, the Chinese being the factory of the world. Now, if you look at China in the late 80s and early 90s, it's increasingly a place where you can manufacture uh, at lower cost. And so they become a low cost alternative. And in many ways, uh, the Chinese are very productive. And so they are a new model, in a sense, of companies allowing them to make use of China as their factory. In the late 90s and the early 2000s, China has become uh, the supply net of many industries. And by that, what I meant is that they have built a huge supply network so that not only is your first tier supplier being located there, the second tier are there, the third tiers are there. So together, they are like the big industrial park 
of your manufacturing world. And so you can make use of that to create many different products, many flavors, many variations. So that's the second stage of making use of China to create mass production, mass customization at the same time. But today, which China is embarking on a new phase, and they are trying hard to do so, but not yet there, but I think they are working very hard, is to create new business values for the world so that they are not just the manufacturing part of the value chain. They want to master product design. They want to master product innovation. So China may become the source of innovation of tomorrow. That's the third stage. Just like an industrial value chain, uh, my relationship with the ASA also started with uh, people. Yes. And uh, I have the great pleasure of uh, being associated with Professor Marco Sachon. Um, and uh, we have a great uh, relationship with mutual respect. Uh, Mark was, of course, a former student at Stanford. Uh, he did his PhD here at Stanford. And together, we felt that um, the value chain is so powerful and so important that many executives have not fully appreciated the strategic importance and the strategic values of managing a value chain well. So we embark on offering this executive program to try to provide frameworks, concepts, best practices, examples, and approaches to executives on how to view their value chain at a strategic and a value-creating level. If I ask uh, any executives, I oftentimes uh, start with a simple question of where do you see the biggest values that your company can have um, in managing your value chain well, many of the executives would start searching the answer by looking inward, looking at their own company. So what can my operation provide great values? What can I do? What can my products do? Our program will help executives to look at the complete value chain. So instead of just looking at yourself, maybe the biggest value creation opportunity lies with your suppliers, or together with your supply partners, or together with your downstream channels, or your customers, or your customers' customers, or your suppliers' suppliers. So by looking at this complete value chain, maybe a much bigger value can be created, and you can position yourself strategically at the right level in this whole value net. And that's the kind of value that I think an executive would, could not imagine making if you only look at your own operation. Mm -hmm.